Look at that. Hold on. Hey, got the record going early. Early before the intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ahead of the game. Oh, wow. All right. That was Where the beat go? Where the beat go? <laughs> All right. Dude, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. There it is. There it is right there. People, hey, let the beat rock. Hey, yo, man, look. The other day, I had hit BT, man. I was like, so what, man? You going to come here freestyling on the beat? <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, the last thing Lance wants is me rapping to him some more. <laughs> rap is like an ear off. You hear me? <laughs> Ain't no freestyle. He got a fall full of written. <laughs> what man? Y'all be doing ciphers or something? Nah, hey, so look, nah. You know, I was in, I was in a, uh, I was in LA yesterday, yesterday and two Tuesday. Damn man, wait a minute, time out. And you, you just traveling back and forth. You not just staying out there for the, uh, for the the KYD. Uh, no, so no. Um, I don't know if we spoke. The K, the KID is no is K done, and then the, oh my bad. Yeah, and then it's um, it'll it'll be um aired Friday. Oh, okay. That that on, only because of the holiday. Oh, cause yeah, normally it's just it's that day. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. All right, man. Tell the story. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, um, um, yeah. So, uh, you, you ever see rappers at the radio or like, uh, like behind the scenes footage when they in the booth, but they reading off their phone? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. the gun, the gun buck you, motherfucker, use a sucker. And they doing that. Right, right. BT doing that all night. He's like, so look. He like, so for this verse, like, cause like, no, hey, no, nah, I'm gonna tell you the real, Mike. This niggas like taking not just music serious, but taking um the challenge of being better lyrically serious. No, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> right. So I'm talking about like, like studying the art of lyricism. Yeah. Just <laughs> listening to Big Daddy Kane and, and, and Grandmaster Cass, like <laughs> African Bombardi, he's trying to go all the way back. <laughs> what did I miss? Let me go back yeah. and listen to this little shit y'all was talking about. He trying to go all the way back in the history of hip hop to try to catch up to now to see, okay, how do I construct? Lyrics at a um at a more complex frequency, right? No joke, Mike. Niggas listen, it's niggas watching um MF Doom bar breakdowns. No joke, Mike. These are all facts, nigga. This is not even know. I don't even tell him one joke. So they like, and, and you know, you know, you know, like um. You know when somebody's like, like new and passionate about something. Oh yeah, he has all of that new passion. That's like, why doesn't everybody know about this? Like, <laughs> like I, I understand vegans now, like new vegans. I get it now because oh, yeah. you get all this new information. You're like, bro, you know this shit is killing us. <laughs> I gotta tell y'all. And niggas is like, bro, I don't know what, what you talking about. <laughs> hey man, I mean, don't nobody else ever care as much as the main person with the right, 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 <laughs> right. So BT has all of this new information because <laughs> BT tell it this whole time, like, no, you talking about lyricists, like, you know, like Cardi B, obviously, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> if it's up, then it's stuck, baby. If it's up, then it's fucking stuck. <laughs> well, like, yeah, nigga, the best lyricists, nigga, like Silk the Shocker, Bow Wow, Cardi <laughs> B, like Boris, nigga, yeah. Sound like Legend Talk to Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, like, so he, like, God, like, all, like, all of these lyric breakdowns and all this, and then that's when he starts saying, like, 
because it's always a, an example. <laughs> so we like, it'll be like an MF Doom bar breakdown or Andre 3000 or something like that, right? And they'll be like, you know, so Andre did this and he rhymed the only, he only rhymed the, um, like the last, the last syllable of every bar, right? Or if this one was like, so he was like, he was rhyming the first, the first word here, the third word here, and first and third, he was doing that. And he's like, damn. And it's like color coordinated and all of this, like to break it down to help you understand like how, how they're rhyming it, right? So it'll be like, it'll be like the Nas breakdown of play. And then BT is like, see, that's why I did it like this. <laughs> Yo, it'll be like a super complex biggie lot. And he like, so that's why, see on this song, that's why I went, see normally. <laughs> So normally, I would have said the mouse is in the house. <laughs> Bitch, put my dick in your mouth. But now that I've been like studying this, see, that's why I did it like this. And I flipped it like that. I'm like, <laughs> the in the conflict. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> Michael, yeah. let me tell you something, bro. Yeah. I have a new. Foul respect for every nigga that ever tried to rap to me, bro. You was just trying to get your little poems off. I'm sorry, fam. I'm sorry for walking away from you in the club. I'm sorry for not buying that, that little CD at the gas station at the Arco. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, I missed that dude. <laughs> Y'all just taught me something, man. I think I'm going to be more receptive to people's passion because I've been on the other side of that as well. I've been right. on like, oh, look at this joke. The reason this joke, this joke. So, man, when people start coming at me with passion, man, I'm going to just, you know, I might set my watch so I can see how much time I'm going to sit and listen, but I'm going to give them the time. And yeah. I'm going to really open up to allow people that time to really get off that passion. Cause that's what you are looking for, man. Just someone to receive it. So you can just give off those good vibes and that Yo. energy and that love that's in the beginning. And what's <laughs> up, wait a minute, what's up with the passion in the beginning, man? It's like, everyone can relate to that feeling, whether it's yes. relationships, a hobby, a new dream is special. Mike. The crazy part is, if it's a rapper, you might be saving somebody's life. Mm. <laughs> this might be, if this music shit don't work out, bro, he knocking niggas' heads off. <laughs> yeah, so we hey. better like his verse. <laughs> so you better like it. You better like, go get that $5, bro. And they, that little bit of progress, bro. Think about the first show you booked. Or like that. That remember when? Remember when it was like, "Oh shit, how am I gonna pay this bill?" And then that that call come through. You like, you start to see the slot. Hey man, <laughs> look, not even the happiness clap. I'm thinking that now. I'm thinking that yes. right now. Not so much like from the bill perspective. From like right now, man. Like when new bookings get on the calendar, it's a feeling of starting over. It's mm -hmm. like, oh shit, okay, now I'm getting this. Like, I just got some call, man, yesterday for a festival. It's a festival. And, man, BT, you might have been at the show with me. Mm. It was that, that jam in the van joints. So oh, yeah. one of them joints, man. So it's like a new call is like, yo, man, <laughs> we back. We doing this and shit. Man, when I, when I tell you this, Lance, I tell you one lie, bro. <laughs> I, I already <laughs> know. I already know, man. You got a book with a whole bunch of verses in it. <laughs> uh, well, right now I'll write. I'll write a. I'll write one bar, or for me, the new process has been so. Like for stand up, right? I was telling the Galans, like for stand up, I started writing from the perspective of uh, what do I really feel strong? What could I just talk to you about for dumbass long? 
or like something I feel very strongly about? And then how do I formulate a, a bit around that? So for that, I've applied to, to music of like, what's just a stance, hard lines in the sand that I got? And that might either be a concept for a song and or a line somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like so, so it's been like, it's, it's really just little chunks of those that I don't know what they'll be at some point in time. But let me just get all these ideas out just so, because just, just to kind of formulate, well, nigga. Yeah. I rap, I rap this nigga ear off, bro. Yo, man. <laughs> and, Lance, and Lance is a nigga that'll tell you it's terrible. So it's like, so I know if he just ignore me or just like nod his head, I know I'm I'm gonna know I'm, I'm in a good spot. Cause this nigga just tell you stop, bro. He's just like, hey man, stop. <laughs> so look, Mike, not here's one, not that one, not that one, nigga. nigga uh, here's the kicker, Mike. I thought I thought that nigga this happens at the beginning, so I'm like, nigga, oh nigga, wait, wait, wait. I left out a very important part. Uh, wait, you gotta do the intro, nigga. Oh <laughs> damn. Right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Black Tea University. Uh, no, wait, let me do that again because I didn't want the in it. Welcome to Black Tea University, everybody. <laughs> Episode 31 in your face. <laughs> Episode 30 is the one we never. <laughs> Episode 30 is the one we didn't introduce ourselves. <laughs> Mikey introduced himself at the end, and that was it. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe, damn. What's up, y'all? My, my, Mikey Winfield here. Um, I don't want to the, the track with a long intro from myself because I want to stay where we at. And uh, yeah, yeah, we good, we good. I, I, I like this. Throw the, energy, the energy somewhere else, you know. Right. So, so the part that that Les left out is I thought this happens at the beginning with the new exciting energy. So. Nigga, not only did I talk Lance's ear off, I talked Manny's ear off about rap. Nigga, I talk. I talk. <laughs> hey man, the last thing a polished rapper wants to hear is a new rapper. Is a new <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you know how weird I be with new comedians trying to talk to me like, come on, bro. Like, hello, uh, you've been doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I was like, I like, man, man, how often you be right, man? <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, listen, if I want to send somebody a 16, do I send them the hook and the verse? Or do I just send them the hook? <laughs> Yo, how you get on a label? Like, how do you get like, <laughs> to release Man, he been rapping forever, bro. He really, really good at it, nigga. And when I tell you, nigga, that's it. And Lance was dying laughing. He was like, nigga, you have no idea how funny this is. <laughs> oh, how oh. do you get invited to the Grammys? Like, like what do you have to do? <laughs> uh -huh. it's, uh, it's so much funnier. Oh, my God. When you when you add um the comparison to the new comic. In those questions, that's, oh, that man. is gold. <laughs> Yo, like, you know, hey, so documentary on Netflix. Like, <laughs> oh, no, you think you think I ain't watching everything hip hop on Netflix? Bro? Oh, this is oh, Timberland. He sounds pretty good. Virginia, you say? <laughs> and he Riley kicked it off. Interesting. Oh, the, the, the Neptunes. Well, look. Oh, <laughs> oh Missy. Uh, he, 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 he. Ow. Yo, I, I was surprised for you to find out that like the Neptunes was like Timberland's OG. That that kind of that caught me off guard, but the fact that uh Pharrell wrote Rum Shaker is just another feather in his clap cap because Pharrell be low key spitting often, like uh. Is it Drop It Like It's Hot? I love Pharrell's verse on Drop It Like It's Hot. Everybody do. Hey, Pharrell's going in on Drop It Like It's Hot. I'm like, huh. And then remember, he dropped the album, and I got both albums. And I was like, I think I like Pharrell as a rapper. But to know that he wrote, uh, 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 it's check, check, it's check, it's Teddy. Ready with the one, two, check it, three, check. <laughs> the fact that he wrote that, I'm like, uh oh. Yo, I'd like to see an impression of BD really realizing that Pharrell's verse was dope. He was probably like, Bro! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was like, like oh. Me, uh, 
eligible bachelor, million dollar boat. That's why it was dripping down your throat. I was like, I'm all in at this point. Hey, baby. <laughs> if chicks is giving it, I'm hey. Um, but nah, man, it, it was wait, no, nigga. I, so I talked this nigga Lance. I wrapped this nigga Lance ear off. I wrapped this nigga uh Manny ear off and talked this nigga about hip hop forever. And, and me I know, nigga- know Manny was just being nice too. I could just see his energy. He was just like being respectful and nice. You know how you be with new comics, bro. You know how you be with new comics, man. Man, you just gotta, you just gotta get up there, bro. <laughs> 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 he in there too. Hold up, man. I got. I'm, uh, you got. Um, he, might, he might be in there recording right now. <laughs> you got Literally, he might be recording. You got to You gotta go do the set, bro. It's. it's you just gotta keep it up, you know. You just gotta keep it up, man. <laughs> I mean, because the most important part at this point is just consistency, right? You know, and you just the more you get on stage, you'll figure it out. <laughs> Yo, it's not really much I can tell you. I mean, I can give you little points, like you definitely want to kind of move the mic stand out your way so you can just work. Yo, you and wanna, not you be wanna, distracted. You know, like a rap at me, you got me. Yo, you show me. <laughs> I can't let. I could get that speech on autopilot right now. Like I could get that speech <laughs> and think about other shit while I'm talking. Cause we've been looking directly in your eyes. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, man. Crazy. Especially like cause you you gonna figure out like your niche. Like I can tell you how I do it, but <laughs> you have to figure out what's comfortable for you when you get up there. Cause everybody got like a, a different style, really. Like if you look at whoever your favorite is and then look at who the biggest is they probably got two totally different styles but they both work it <laughs> yo, yo, so, yo, what's well, for you is for you yo, man. <laughs> <laughs> I w- i've been in san francisco the last two weekends this last weekend that happens where the guy yes. comes to me at the show and he's like look man i just need you know like any pointers and any this and that and I'm like, yeah, man, okay, cool. But yeah, I'm gonna uh, drop my set and then I'll hit you. Then after my set. So yeah, man, you know, you got any- um... Drop your set, I'm right yeah. here. You can't let you get to that car. <laughs> I'm like, hey man, look, I got you, man. Like, um, let me just think about it and I'm gonna hit you. Then I get the message on Facebook. Hey man, I'm just wondering if you got any, uh, you know, you know, any pointers <laughs> on my set and you know, and I'm like, hey man, I got you. <laughs> so I just, it's like three days later, and I was like, yeah. hey, man, I feel bad that I yeah. have not responded, but I didn't have much. So then it's like, yeah, man, look, man, like everybody different, you know, you got to put in the time, man. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I gave it, it was all written out. And that's all I could offer. Hilarious. I'm really good at the direct question. Like, this is the scenario, what should I do? Right. I, I feel much more helpful in that space versus do you have any advice? Yeah. Help me with I'm trying to do something. I'm pursuing all my dreams in life. Can you help? <laughs> yeah, that that's that's just more of a general question. So that is gonna be more of a general answer. Hey Amen. What I but, learned though, oh go ahead, go, go ahead. No, I was just saying just when somebody hit you with the specific, yeah. it's, it's much easier. Okay, yeah. man, so when people ask advice, I think they just want an ear. They just want something to <clears throat> put a cap on fulfillment, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yo, just say something so that yeah. I can walk away now feeling better and just, that's it. Right. Yeah. Remember being a kid when they was like, figure that shit out yourself. You ever been like, somebody told you that? And it, it's like, damn, I'm on my own with this. <clears throat> And you truly are a lot of times. Like somebody's yeah. advice is not about to change everything yeah. in your life, but you and, are on and, your own. And then I'm always very conscious of being in those positions. Mm-hmm. I think I told you all here some of the best advice I ever got came from Tony Roberts. Mm. Did I tell you about that story? Mm-mm. I feel like I said it on here before, but I'm just now like kind of like not just meeting him, but kind of like knowing him. Mm. And I'm like excited, like, cause this is 
This is my favorite comment. I'm like, I got so many questions. And I was like, I was like, man, hey, like, hey, man, what, what do you think I should do? Like, how, how do I go to the next level? Like, what's that? And he said, I'm going to tell you the first thing you do is stop asking me all these goddamn questions. <laughs> 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 Amen. This advice will stop asking me all these goddamn questions. And <laughs> me knowing his personality now, I know what he meant, but I took it as stop asking questions, just do the work and you'll figure it out. Which both work. Yes. He right. just said stop asking me all these goddamn questions. Because he can never pass up on the joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, he couldn't pass on the joke this morning. On this morning, when we was like, <laughs> Right. On the text. Y'all niggas always late. Like, yeah, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. never going to pass up on the joke. But that was just in that moment. Like, and because the funny thing is, most of the best advice I got did not come from me asking for it. Yeah. They just kind of gave you that. Hey, Les, you ever watch somebody give you advice by accident? Like you watching somebody figure something out and in the midst of them figuring something out, you figure something out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> that motherfucker, that, them two jewels drop at once. You be like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is, man, you need right. if, if a nigga just like I got a good mind to just like produce my own show. <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, man, you know, I, th I think deep down, no, somewhere deep inside, we all want advice because nobody got everything figured out. But mm. just to, you know, it's just if it just come to you, then, man, you won. You won. Yeah. That's why I think it's important to just ask questions out loud of shit you want to know, and it locks into the subconscious, and then it just gets answered somehow. Mm -hmm. The stuff you want, you know, I think it's just the answers are there. Well, you know what else, too? Like, you had said something earlier that was like, uh, one of the things I think is, like, profound is I, I highly appreciate being an artist uh, to see, like, when I know comics that are parents, they normally nurture the children's dreams. Like that's a beautiful thing to me. So when you were saying earlier, like they be one, they you 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 do want advice, but another part of it is you just want somebody to talk to that also can hear where you are because you ain't got nobody to bounce his passion off of. You're just like, uh, uh Lance like rap, <laughs> Lance rappers. <laughs> like, <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got you. I know you'll have a sounding board. So it's like you need a sounding board. Because probably nobody understands the mindset that you're in. So it's just like, I'm thinking, just duh. I, I've been in the club and had the rapper nigga rap to me. And rappers get treated dumb, dirty, bro. Because you can't, like, as a comic, there's open mics for comics, right? There's comedy clubs for comics, right? There's places for us to go to perform. Where do you go work out as a rapper? They got, oh, I, I remember in SAC, there was a law that you would, it wasn't even a law. It was like an unspoken rule for a uh, producer. We would produce shows with, with mics where you could come perform poetry, comedy, R&B music, let me tell you what you can't do here. Rap. Don't you bring that bullshit. <laughs> wow. Don't you, you and your nigger tendencies, if you don't get your black ass. It was like a hard rule in the city because the stigma of rapper brought energy. It, it, wrote, it No, it wasn't, it wasn't a law. It raised the insurance. That's wild, man. Yeah. It raised the insurance on the building if you had a rap show. I see. So where where do where do rappers go figure out they stage presence? Where do they where do they where do they hone shit at? Yeah, man, you just and gotta be they, lucky outside of a club when people yeah. are in a circle and they just start and you just gotta jump in and be like, fuck it, I must do mine. Right, but that but that's now we're working performance shit, right? But that's not really on, I'm just, you know, a stage show. It's like, no, nah, nigga, it's like, where do I walk? Where do, what do I do on this line? Where am I? What do I do with my hands? <laughs> like, uh, 
Hey, that's man, crazy. I would that, go to that. that. Now that you think about it, I would go to a open mic rap where people just came in and dropped verses that was something, and then it was the next. Mikey, peep this. <laughs> I've been the one. Nigga, when I tell you, here's the hilarious part. So it was at like a, like, let's just say a random ass club, right? Any club you can think of that's small, right? It was a little booth. It was dark as fuck. And all the walls were like brick because you because brick is harder to shoot. Um, and the, the, the bullets don't really fly through brick the same way. So these, <laughs> so you got all these rappers in there, right? Some niggas is solo dolo. Some niggas is like weirdo backpack niggas. Some niggas is gangster niggas that they, they already got the money and they feel like they own the space. Wait, Mike, there's not really a crowd. And there's no seats. And it ain't, and the space ain't that big, and it ain't that many niggas can perform. So, <laughs> so it's like uh it's like I think of a comedy club with no chairs. With no chairs, but nobody's talking to each other because all the rappers are tough. So these niggas don't commute. <laughs> and it's dark as fuck, nigga. So it's like a club. With music playing that they don't give a fuck about because they ready to perform, nigga. So it's a really awkward environment. And this is years ago. This is way before I ever even considered music. But it's nigga, they they were in there and they're letting they're talking to each other and shit. Then they go, they do the one song. And here's the funny part: you can tell that this song do good for him every week when he performs. And every now and then some stragglers might walk in, or another rapper would be there. With a girl, his girlfriend, a wife, a baby mama, and she brought like two or three chicks with her, and maybe I can get they energy, just possibly some energy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a sad uh, sight, bro. It's a this is exactly, exactly how rap shows are. Yes, nigga. And then, and then so you have that. Those are like um, the open mic rap shows. And then you have the show where somebody actually put some money up and yeah. said, we're going to have a show. Now, then they call me, they call Mike, they call BT. They say, hey, man, can you host, can you host this show? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's going to be like a, it's like a music show, but I want you to host it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Especially at a time where you like, Hey man, three hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. So, <laughs> right. all right. So now you host the show. So rap show start at eight o'clock. You get there seven forty-five. Show don't start till nine thirty. Oh God, no! Yeah, at the earliest. At the earliest. At the earliest, we're talking nine thirty, and then, and then, the sound is terrible and horrible. Oh, it's the, the worst. sound is always terrible. <laughs> All of that, right? Jiggas don't know how to hold the mic. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, Lance, wait, Lance, don't leave this. Not only is the sound terrible, but whatever CD that they gave the DJ, because ain't no band, whatever CD they gave the DJ might not be a performance CD. It might be the actual song. Yes. Yes. And then... I, I, I have the image in my head vividly because I remember the last rap show I hosted. Mm. Um, and is that the <clears throat> what's the spot down? Is that is that called the Blue Q? Yes, next to Harlow's. Yep. And no, yep. not that one. It's upstairs. It's the, um, no, upstairs from Harlow's is Momo's. No, I thought right right down the street was Blue Q. That could be that? Blue Q. No, that is Blue Q. Oh too. yeah, that is. So, so I, I named the wrong club. Mm. It's it's the one like Alhambra. It's like on the corner. Okay. It's just that they do a lot of like rap shows there, music shows there. But um, it be it be so. Like that's the thing about rap music, right? Okay, so, so let's just say, let's say it's an R and B performance, right? Soul. Soul music or whatnot, right? You don't have to know the words, but you say, yo, this sounds good, man. It's just peaceful. Her mm -hmm. voice is ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> you just be like, that her, voice? her voice, her voice sound like the birds. <laughs> 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 right? Nobody listens to rap music they don't know. That's fact. That's tough. No one hears rap that they never heard. They're like, yo, this sounds pretty good. It's like the, the thing about live rap is you gotta know it to at least bop along with it, do something. But when you just don't know nothing. And the sound ain't good, it just sound like noise. And then this is advice just for all young rappers. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay to perform without 95 people on stage. I don't know about that, bro. Yo, I can imagine that probably feel good. You got all your peeps up there. They the only ones know the words anyway. And man, <laughs> but if it's a show. If it's a show and there's not a lot of people there, they would serve you better in the <laughs> audience. Because, Mike, ain't nobody in the audience, bro. Yeah, man. They just look like they practicing. And lead that yeah, motherfucker like they ripped it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They always leave with their shirt on. One hundred percent of the time. Ain't not this nigga. <laughs> 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 uh, not I said the cat my shirt will be on I'm telling you right now 100% of the time they leave with their shirt off sweat like we yeah. killed that shit and bro and they in the beginning man so they can't rip their shirt off they gotta pull it over cause they yeah. you know, gotta wear it again <laughs> and Mike, gotta... Mike this, this be like the only one this be like the only show these shows come few and far between <laughs> them niggas dumb excited to be there but they also don't let them be street niggas they don't really know how to thank you or be like appreciative like nigga what they do it's, uh, yo man hey man motherfucker you a nigga no nigga fa 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 nigga man <laughs> yeah uh, that's how you say that's how you say thank you the rapper nigga <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bro, that shit is interesting, fam. Yo, it's all a game, man. So these rappers, they got to, you know, you got to elevate your own game. And then maybe you need to find an R&B singer that you could pair with and start a relationship. And hopefully things work out. Or maybe it doesn't. And you end up fighting in the elevator. Oh, come on, man. Drop that goddamn segue on they <laughs> dog ass. You know, man, things things happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my favorite part of this, my favorite part of this is the breakdown of what happened. So obviously we're talking about the, the Sweetie Quavo thing, right? Nigga. So y'all don't play Call of Duty Warzone. But let me tell you something. That box that they're fighting about says Call of Duty on it. So in Warzone, nigga, when you're when you're playing the game, there's a uh, basically like let's say Mike. So on this game, you have a uh, your favorite gun, right? Your favorite gun with your favorite attachments and your favorite like little perks or ability, like being able to run faster or whatever, are in that box. So the boxes drop on this map, like this huge map. So nigga, when I tell you on the game, there's always fight for the loadout there's all because it'll drop two or three teams loadout right there like together it's like like literally when we're approaching the loadouts we're like oh shit it's it's three boxes so that means get your shit and get the fuck out of here because niggas might be coming and we're gonna have to fight so nigga when i saw all the memes that said these niggas was really fighting over a loadout bro i am <laughs> dying laughing now double it down my second thought is, is in real life, if this box that they're tussing over that he thought he thought enough to, to give her a forearm shield, get off this box. So very, very, it's, it's not funny, but it's funny. Bro, that, <laughs> that might have been his PlayStation. If the, yeah. if, if, it, if, if, it, if it has, if this carrying case has Call of Duty stickers all over. It says that on the, on the case. Might have been his goddamn PlayStation. 
yo, that's what I heard. Cause I didn't know that was the Call of Duty box. And then they telling me that's what it was. Yeah. So man, and it's it, like, how do you get to somebody you really want to get to? She was trying to, she was trying to hurt the PlayStation, bro. <laughs> And even as even as Quavo for the Migos, you know how hard it is to get another PlayStation Five. Oh man, Nigga! Hey, the ones you love hurt you the most. Oh, uh, she didn't reach for the, that nigga had three bags, bro. She reached for the niggas, bro. Mm. Mm. So you got this all? You cracked the case. It was over a PlayStation. I'm not sure it's the PlayStation. I know the box. I know for a fact that the box ain't Call of Duty all over it. And I know she was trying to throw it. And she reached for that box, and I'm like, nigga, that's the nigga. Watch, nigga, when you watch the video, watch him. Watch how delicate he is with that. Oh. <laughs> he never <laughs> reaches to pick her up. That nigga grabbed that box and slid that bitch back like, hey, he did. I didn't know what it was, but he did. And just imagine if she had the PlayStation over her head and uh, was like, say something. And he was uh, like, you know, I don't know. Boosh. Yo, man, that's heartbreak. Uh, hey, hey, good topic. You ever had a woman damage your shit off of some, uh, you know, <laughs> off of some disagreements? <laughs> damage my belongings. Yo, man, this ain't even a tough one for me. I can never hey! Multiple <laughs> times, I've had, hey! no, I had my T-shirts cut up one time a long time wait. ago, which almost led to some chokeholds. I've wait, had, wait, wait, hold wait, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Clothing or merch? Merch. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey man, merch. Hey, Yo, I know we talk a twenty a pop oh. after a good set. <laughs> <laughs> You told me it's like cut up the cash. Yo, you talking about and man, look at wow. me. if this, my logic is terrible because I'm like, if we ain't fighting over bitches, it ain't even that bad. Like, right, right, right. The fight. All right, I see where you're coming from. But if it's some <laughs> other stuff, yo, man, it ain't it don't even have to be that serious, man. But I've had I, over the course of time, yo, I've had flour and egg. Throw on my car, man. You remember I had that Jetta? Y'all remember I, I used to have that uh, that new Jetta? Yeah. Flour and egg all over the windshield, man. Okay, I came out. I came out one one day, and my car was egged. <laughs> but I I couldn't think of who would have egged my car because I didn't have no issues with nobody. Like there was no argument, there was no nothing. So I was like, yo, maybe this was like random, but mm. it was like, nah, it was only my car. <laughs> After I looked at the other cars in the in the, in the park, and I was like, no, this was unless y'all got something against Corollas. <laughs> maybe, maybe they got the wrong car. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless y'all got something against Corollas of a certain year making model. Hmm. This is personal. Man, uh, egg be tough to get off too, especially if the super sun. hard. Yeah, man. It, it goes when the Don't egg sit. <laughs> yes, bro, it's hot. The egg sits, and it's like it starts to peel your paint. Yeah, yeah. You try and get it off. Um, and you know that Corolla paint that, that should be difficult. Corolla paint is a whole different ball game. That champagne color, that little breast, sparkly brown. Mm. <laughs> and if she really hates you, it's brown eggshells. Like, damn, she went and got the brown. <laughs> you trying to make it hard and confuse it. Hold on. Let me, anything else? I remember the car being egged. That's definitely say Call of Duty on. <laughs> Yo, that's some straight seriousness, though. When you got the, <laughs> the briefcase, <laughs> hey, bro, you got the briefcase. <laughs> it's real out here. That could be a whole. That that looked like a PlayStation box to me, bro. Hey man, yeah, that's definitely not the new suit. No, he didn't give a damn about that black bag. 
That is, you know, what's funny about that black bag? It ain't nothing but money in there. It's, 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 it's probably, it's probably eighty thousand dollars in that black bag. She give a shit. She went for that one, bro. Right. The other bag got enough to buy fifty <laughs> playstations. But they are hard to get. You can't just. You gotta call them. <laughs> <laughs> they got. I can get fifty new playstations, but all of my uh, gamer tag stuff is saved on this one. Oh my goodness, bro. Mm. Uh. Ouch. Yeah, that's painful. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I, can't, I can't think of nothing else. Like some damaging my belongings. I, I had a girl try to stab me once. Yeah. Uh, so I guess she was trying to damage me. <laughs> and you belong to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently I belong to the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I had a girl, uh, uh, Corvette, Yo, Corvette wait, me. Wait a minute, wait, wait, I'm not finished with that, man. Like, did you block it? Did you <laughs> run? What happened with the stabbing, with the attempt? <laughs> she had a knife, and she was like going off. Oh, bitch ass nigga, and I'm sitting here. All of that, all of that, you know, emotional, dramatic um, thing that people um, in relationships do when they got a knife in their hand. So, yeah, she was like coming towards me with the knife. And she was like, she was real short too. She was probably like, she was like 14, like real short. So um she was like coming, and then I kind of like grabbed her arm like this, and then she was like doing this with the knife that she couldn't move it. So then I kind of like uh like turned her around and like grabbed her from behind and then the knife just kind of fell and I stepped on it. I was just like, um. Yo, are you, is this the end of a Lifetime movie? Does this really happen? <laughs> this really happened. This, this was crazy long ago. I was probably, I was probably 18. So we, we was probably both around 18 or 17. Like that. Oh my God. But wait, and then, um, keep going. And then um, once, I, once I was like able to grab her, I, can, I like kind of like picked her up and like put her on the bed like yo and then I kind of had the knife like yo what are you what are you doing like mm -hmm. and then just, ah, ah, I was like yeah you should just leave wait wait you didn't fuck after that no oh, oh nigga that's the best pussy. yo tell us about it BT <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not I had a I had a chick uh and she Corvette Corvette me nigga when um she was just dumbass mad and fussing and screaming and then nigga that bit she did what it needs to be nigga <laughs> I ain't gonna you, how you react I jump oh okay <laughs> I didn't know if your reaction was the flinch to come back with one or nothing, <laughs> nothing crazy nah she was far enough away that I didn't think her reach would hit me but it was enough for me to lay like, hey, cause she was like our neighbor our, here's the funny part we had, we really had like a low key Romeo and Juliet thing, bro. Cause our our neighborhoods were like rivaling neighborhoods. So, and 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 at this point in time, it had never been an issue. But at that moment, she was just from Acres Home, and I was like, "Hey, bro, watch out! <laughs> like, Y'all niggas is a threat. <laughs> it's all good to roll, niggas. <laughs> I know what this is about." <laughs> <laughs> uh, she and she had older brothers too. I ought to call her right now. See, <laughs> remember that time? <laughs> remember, yeah. remember, when, remember when you flinched at me back in the day? Because <laughs> we used to, we had like a thing, man. We had like this strong ass chemistry, man. You just be uh, like kicking it and hanging out and fucking in my mama car and shit. Like it was a, it was a, it was a thing. And I don't know what I did, but she was hurt, bro. And then she hit that Corvette, Corvette on me, nigga. And I was like, wait a minute, nigga. <laughs> I was like, I, 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 after that, calm down a little bit. That thing was, that was the original WAP, bro. That thing was. Damn. Juicy, juicy. <laughs> like, I got it at this point in time where, like, niggas is like, crazy chicks have the, the best. I'm like, I mean, no. Nah, let me tell you, the best pussy is still new pussy. It's still best. That's, new pussy is like that's, tied with... That's number four. Uh -oh. That's number four. 
Yeah, new new is new is tied with safe raw. Safe raw, it, it, it don't get enough credit. Safe raw, effortless is don't get enough don't get enough credit. Hmm. Don't get enough credit. Hmm. I can I can I feel safe here. I can leave my wallet on the dresser and nothing will be missing. Right. <laughs> You've been in this house all week, haven't you? <laughs> Hey man, you ever been robbed and you can't say shit about it because you wasn't supposed to be in that situation anyway? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be hell of a story. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, man. I don't got shit. Go ahead. <laughs> you, I, you ever, <laughs> you ever had, you ever, you ever have a, a like a situation? But I, no, 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 like a okay, Mike, so I'm with you. So like a situation you can't talk about because you wasn't supposed to be over there. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You ain't even supposed to be in this area. Yeah. You be thinking like, you know, my girl will find this story so funny. Only I can't tell her anything about it. Hey, anytime you're dealing with a chick that you've been dealing with for a while and you start giving her new memories and stories, she's like, where you get these new memories and stories from? Right. Oh, yeah. I like when a, I met you, you had had two threesomes, and now you keep te- you keep describing this new one that I don't remember. Where did this come from? Hey man, that be the thing, yeah man. When you revisit your numbers and your body count a little higher now, and it's like I thought it was <laughs> it was more that wasn't in the twenties. <laughs> hey, that's always been the dumbest conversation to me, right? A body count conversation. It's the worst. Even when I was a young tyke, I was like, why, why do you want to know this stuff? This is stupid. First off, you're going to lie. Yeah. And then, I don't know. I definitely don't know. I, 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 I definitely don't know. Anymore. In the beginning, you knew. In the beginning, yeah. Yeah, when I was 17. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah. Like, but like that, like, bro, no, no joke. Now, if you try to do that to me, like, I literally, I, I'm no, I don't, I don't know. First, of, well, know that it's three digits. <laughs> <laughs> know that it's, know that it's three digits, and it could give or take. If the, if she takes me back, it might change tomorrow. <laughs> I like, 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 yeah, I, I had no idea. What, I had no idea what that number is. And you know we're in a cool. culture now where women, rightfully so, can have any number that yes. they want to have because that's the power of women not being looked at a certain way for having a high number. But that I'll never forget Chris Rock's joke. Do, do. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's how you was raised. <laughs> 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 You know what my kicker is, though, bro? I don't mind that you've been out here. That don't bother me. What bothered me is is history of niggas, bro. I can't, bro. If I if I if you introduce me to your mama, and your mama didn't met four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas, I'm like, bro, I don't want to be here. I'd rather you had been doing porn, anything but this. <laughs> so hey, so, I, so do you just not ask the questions then? No, well you can't you can't get away from them niggas and they can't either because they got a history of just niggas that they dated. Like, oh no, we were together and this is my ex. I'm like, how many exes you got? How many ex-boyfriends do you have? That's disgusting. I'm judging you. <laughs> and don't tell me this shit about well if I was a man nah niggas don't be having girlfriends like that so this <laughs> we don't commit so no no that's not the rules <laughs> it's just you out here loving niggas <laughs> you so. your mama met all these niggas bro you ever you ever been to a chick house and she went to somebody I would I remember I remember when I went to the chick house it was like her it, it was it wasn't her house it was like her parents house it was like a barbecue or some random shit. And I remember looking and she had, in one year, she had went to two different proms. She went to some nigga prom, her prom, and homecoming with three different niggas. I said, this ain't going to work. 
This ain't gonna work. Them look like wedding pictures to me. <laughs> and they're still up. And you 33. I'm out. You ain't let these niggas go. Your parents ain't let these people go. I'm out, bro. And they could have, y'all could have, none of y'all even touched each other. This is gross. <laughs> you too, you too emotional. You you you're too willing to give your heart. Oh my God! You would get a pussy. Don't be giving a heart. Be that little pussy away. <laughs> Yo, you know what upset me about the whole what's it called thing is the judgment that comes with. I'm talking about back to Quavo and Sweetie, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that everybody? People go through stuff. So it's like, what's all this judgment? Like people ain't never been in a physical altercation in your relationship. I nah, mean, check it. Go ahead. I mean, it's like when feelings are involved, man. Sometimes things happen. It just doesn't get caught on video. But man, right. like half the people that's like, oh, this should never happen. It's, it's true. Maybe it shouldn't. But I know <laughs> how it can. <laughs> hey. Have you seen the Tina Turner doc on HBO? No. Nah. It's new. Oh, man. Nah, I heard. I have heard about it. Oh, my goodness. So I watched it, and it was it was quite disgusting to me. But, um, yeah, man, I would just, I just, yeah, man, I would just, just watch it and see, and see what you take away from it. But... I don't I don't like the Tina Turner doc. I don't like what's love got to do with it. The movie. I don't I I don't I don't like Tina Turner. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Tina Turner. I mean she do got that hair. That hair ain't never really been jamming, being honest. Said that yeah. hair ain't never been jamming. That hair ain't never really been jamming, bro. Her her, her that hair ain't John Blaze. Like she had the she had her thighs were great. What don't you like about her? Tina, okay. Even like I said, going back to what's love got to do with it. The the portrayal of Ike Turner into the the poster child in the forever face of domestic violence is some bullshit. Right. I I, I I'm not in the house. I don't know nothing. I just know. That even like if okay, if you watch the Tina Turner doc, there's one thing that is very clear to me when you watch it. She has a disconnection to black. So, and you know, everybody has their their things that lead to these things. She, they talk about how her her mama left her, didn't want her, her pops left, and then um, and then a relationship with Ike. Is she mixed? No. Oh, so wait, nigga, that's hilarious. Keep going. Yeah. Mama so, and Daddy Black. Yes. Okay, keep going. Yeah. They don't, they don't really talk much about her dad. They, her mom is a black woman. Gotcha. They show her mom. Her mom's a black woman. So, um, so yeah. So, so all these bad things they talk about. And then... Put it you like this. When when she's talking about black people, it's negative. When she's talking about white people, it's praise. Because mm-hmm. her new husband is a white man. Um, her managers, all of it, the people she gives all the credit to for her career are white people. Right. Well, Ike clearly had something to do with his career. Ike, Ike put her on. Right, but they kind of let's glance past that. Like Ike was the hottest nigga in Memphis, and she got next to Ike, and Ike put her on. Ike gave her her name. All of that. Let's and, say, let's say he did hit her. Do we give credit to niggas for beating people to success? I'm just asking. Yo, man, I don't know if I'm gonna entertain that right now. Hey, man, <laughs> do we have Ike's point of view, like Ike's story, Has that ever been made? Never. You never got Ike's point of view. That's, now, that's unfair then. Right. It's one-sided. Now, they... <laughs> I never hit her. <laughs> this no, is why. I, this is I've why seen, I did it. <laughs> I've seen interviews where I talked about hitting her. I'm, I'm not saying I can never put hands on her. I think 
a part of that, you have to, it's not excusing it, you have to add some context of the time. This was a time when domestic violence was rampant. Yeah. Right? It, it doesn't make it right. It was just like, bro, like even when you watch the James Brown story, right? You, you see James Brown putting hands on, on, his, on his woman. Yeah, Ray Charles too with his blonde ass. Ray Charles, right? But they he not didn't, he, he, how did Ray Charles know though? He was just <laughs> he was, he was just, just swinging. He, was just, he, he, he missed the person. She got in the way. There you go, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he missed the first three. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Be still. <laughs> Let me feel your wrist. Oh, I, I hit the wrong one. <laughs> so, so to make I turn the poster child for domestic violence is insane. Right, all of the all of the memes are of Ike Turner, right? Of yo, who did that though? I don't know, but that's just hilarious. Who did that? Who, who made him, or, or who or who made him the poster child? Who made him the poster child for domestic violence? Tina Turner and them folks. Big mm. mm -hmm. and you know, I it's hard to find Ike's perspective, but I dug deep. Right now, there are theories out there. This this is not a theory. This is just what happened. Ike Turner wrote the first ever rock and roll song that happened. Mm. Rocket eighty eight. Ike Turner wrote that. Ike Turner is credited by people around us like a musical genius that never really got the credit because he got hooked on drugs. Mm. There's theories about how he got hooked on drugs. Right, like. They they really had it out for Ike, right? Even in the documentary, when Tina left Ike, when she was going to sign with other labels, and the labels is like, "Are are you? We'll only work with you if you not if you away from Ike." Mm. Why why would that be? Why would a label say we'll only work with you if you if you're not with your husband no more? That's none of your business. What I'm doing with my husband or my right. family, right? <laughs> now. One of the white men, her manager or whatnot, came to Tina like, we should write a book. Let's write a book, Tina. I'll write it. Like, what? You see this industry, the, um, the agenda that they've had, always had, to make black men look a certain way. Oh, my God, I get it. You know what I mean? And Ike Turner was a part of that. Not saying that I can't do nothing. Like, do I think Ike was violent with Tina? Yes. I also think they were violent with each other. Here's another thing. Well, see, here's the thing, man. We got to give some credit somewhere. We know it's, it's easier to do it to Ike because we know white men don't hit women. They kill them bitches. That's the difference. <laughs> You kill her, you throw her off a boat. <laughs> so, and they so, just highlight that she a victim, but they never show the dude. But man, you're right. White, yes, that's, white that's, men kill they women. So, they, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so like a little sad giggle. They get your the violence against women. I mean, in, in in certain worlds, you might look at Ike as a hero. And Tina survived. No, BT, what you said though is like profound also. That's not even domestic violence. It's just murder. Yeah. So it's not domestic violence. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and maybe I'll get canceled for this. But getting beat up is not as bad as somebody killing you. <laughs> but we know we don't know no white men. We know white men kill women. We know that. Yo, we don't know. We don't have a. We don't have a poster child for that. Hey, You've check already this. said four other things that would have got you canceled. So I was <laughs> listen, BT, the T and BT is stand for toxic. <laughs> Been toxic. Boy, toxic. Boy, toxic. Come slipping out. All right, check this out, Mike. <laughs> this is a, this is a um, this is a thing I heard from someone 
who whose opinion I trust in. They well, okay. They, there's just so much here about this doc, right? So there's four kids. So I I had two kids, and then Tina had a, a son, and then they had one together, right? Now y'all remember the the what's love got to do with it movie is like some lady just dropped Ike's kids off out the blue. Yeah, the right? two. Yeah. The two. The real story is Ike went and got his kids. Like, no, I'm their father. I'm going to have my kids. That's the real story. This movie portrays like Ike was out doing dope, living, and some ladies dropping these, oh, bitch, kids, I'm trying to get hot. And it's like, why, why are y'all doing that? Like, why are y'all doing that to him, man? And so, even like little things like that. Tina talks about the doc how she never really, she never really raised her kids. She was just focused on work, right? If you flip that around and that's a black man, what are y'all doing to him? Are y'all are y'all praising him for not fucking with his kids because he because he want to be a star? And yeah, man, it's it's a it's a crazy space because if we like what started last what you said at the beginning. Ike Turner is the poster child for domestic violence. Uh -huh. But there is no poster child for killing wives. There's no poster child for shooting up schools. There's no poster. There's, there's, there's faces to, to attach to this stuff. There's no, but they don't. It's just it's just a white white man with a ball cut. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll <laughs> a nigga that refused to get a fade. Like they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll make a story out of it. But like, like you'll see, like somebody says something about Snap, you'll see it on Snap, or you'll see it like they'll make sure we we highlight this story. Oh, the sad story of Amy uh, Boulevard. Is she was such a a queen? It's like, but what about? Let's talk about the messed up dude that did stuff to her. Because because mm -hmm. because it, it, if, if it's reversed, the story of Tina Turner isn't if the story of Tina Turner isn't uh, how Tina like was able to get out of this. It's how horrible is Ike? And by the way, good thing Tina got away from him because woo, black man evil. Like divide yes. the family. Yes. Yeah. So so because so. if they were fighting, that's different than. He coming in the house every day beating you up. Bro, something I heard from someone who I who I believe when they speak, Tina Turner was a pimp. That's what he said. He said, so this is back. This is back. Uh anime back in the day was a pimp, like a violent, like a like a pimp. And it makes sense because she had no parents. Her parents ever she on the street, she gotta figure it out. Mm. Right? So they say no, like Tina been violent. Like mm. the, she's been violent. Like she's pimping. So they saying his, his thing is I didn't like I took her out the game. He saved her. Took her out the game. Yo, I'm peep pimping. this. Peep this. Just in case anybody was anti what theory you're going with, right? This is crazy. Because we normally don't acknowledge the comments, but I just look, look down and dark crooked said something profound. Who's the poster child for killing white women? That's OJ. Nigga! Hmm. OJ! OJ! They gave, so they gave us that too. Well, at least they, at least they keep it consistent. All that's these right. white men killed all of these white women and the that's poster child for killing white women is O.J. Simpson. That is crazy. If you want to talk about killing a white woman and make it connect where everybody knows what you're talking about, say O.J. Simpson. If you want to talk about um, domestic violence against a woman, say Ike Turner. That's insane. That is, that's insane. We, I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer, that, that is... Yo, 
Yo, we just cracked the case here at the university. I feel like this right here is groundbreaking to open minds to see that the portrayal of the black man is to be tainted, is to be uh, ill-willed, is to be, you know, taken down. This is the example. Yeah. I mean, OJ is one guy. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. He, he tell, let, 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 not to get twisted. OJ definitely killed the white woman, but. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, but it's only one, one guy. If but. the glove don't fit, you must acquit. The, hey, that's crazy, bro. That's the, I mean, listen, we know that there is a, there is a systematic, I, I really don't like the, uh, it, let me tell you something, side note, just the reason I love this podcast. Um, for anybody listening, <laughs> the way that we bounce back and forth between humor and like serious stuff is always <laughs> extremely fun to me. Uh, but for my brain, my brain just likes dark humor. So it's just like, it's an interesting space. Anyway, um, that's a, we know that there is a legit effort from media to demonize black men. It's always existed. It still exists to this day. It's never going away, right? Like, like, well, I ain't gonna say it's never going away, but it still exists to this day for sure, right? And then take that and put it next to, uh, you ever get distracted by something on TV and you can't help it, bro? Mm -hmm. I, the, the, there's a church's chicken sandwich commercial on right now, and I hadn't even been considering the church's chicken chicken sandwich. Right. I ain't even, I ain't even know they was battling, but I saw it and I was like. All right, church is chicken. I gotta find a church of chicken. Yeah, gotta, like they're gonna try to enter the conversation now. Yeah, I gotta I gotta see who won here. But mm. no, like um, there's something to be said about like how they it, it's like not only do they demonize black men, but next to that, then they make they they might uh, elevate black women to higher separate us, right? Because if black men and black women are together, then that's a win. If if black women are shining and you're moving in the powerful powerful position, but there's no masculine energy to provide protect that don't exist. It's like if we're not there to protect them, then it's just like, yeah, you can do it on your own. You're independent and, and, and amazing. But this is going to be a harder battle because it's two against one. Yeah, that, that's that's a purposeful tactic that they've been doing. Yeah, get 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 her, get her in the house by herself, and yeah, in the comfortable in here now. Do what we say, cause cause he's strong. Yeah, yeah, man. It's like um, even see one of the people who's in the dock a lot is Oprah. Mm -hmm. And you know, <sighs> Oprah has been doing this to black men consistently. Mm. You know, Oprah, Oprah and Gail have been on this subtly, you know, let's 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 ask questions about Kobe after he's dead. And let's it's it's so much stuff. I remember when Cobra Co Cobra. Uh I remember when Oprah no. said you said it, Cobra. <laughs> she's a snake in the grass. <clears throat> trying to trying to bring down the mamba. Yeah. The I remember I remember when Oprah was just like anti-rappers. She's like, no, yes. no rappers on my show. And it was what was it? It wasn't fast, was it fast five? It, I don't know. It was it was either fast and the furious. Or it was no, and, it was and, 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 and Tyrese couldn't come through. Or Ludacris. Ludacris. No, it wasn't, it was the other movie. The uh the interchange of crash. 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 And she let everybody come on but but Ludacris because he's a rapper. Because you're a rapper and then you're art, you say the bitch word and no. Like Ludacris? Luda? Ludacris. Would you let Mark Wahlberg on the show? Because he was a rapper too. Definitely was a rapper. I'm just wondering. I don't know if Mark Wahlberg ever did the show. I'm just asking. 
He not only was a Mark Wahlberg is from these streets also. And Mark Wahlberg has a, you know, he, Mark Wahlberg has a case about don't he got like some beating somebody up and calling him a nigger case or something like that? Yes, from way back in the day. I know he went to. Back I know. I know he did time. I don't know what it was for. But but like but this go all the way back to like all the stuff we're seeing going on with the football dude right now. But nobody say nothing about Big Ben, and I'm just like, yo, but, but Big Ben though, but Big Ben. You got you got to think about they had a, they had a list of the most the most hated NFL players of all time. I would probably say Michael Vick is at the top of that list. Which makes Married at First Sight a very interesting show, mm. right? For the for the dogs, <laughs> Mike, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> the but, but the crazy thing Arthur about Mike, Mike Vick is, people think Arthur Michael Vick went to jail for dog fighting, and he didn't. Yeah, Michael Vick went to jail for um, it was the money, like it was the transporting of the money. Past certain lines, it's just it's all of these weird little technicalities, right? It's like dog fighting is illegal, but cock fighting is legal. Like, yo, what are we doing? <laughs> I never understood these things. You know what I mean? I just, you know, I'm, you know, I just, I don't, I don't be knowing, bro. Yeah. You know, so and like when Oprah, when Oprah was like having Jay-Z on the show, that was strictly because he's with Beyonce. Yeah, you can't ignore him. It's, you can't ignore him because he's with her. She's too big. You love her. And, you know, we had this conversation the other day. You know, Jay be trying to break new ground in space. He's like, I'll be the, hopefully you'll change, you'll change your tone after this. And she kind of did. But still, she had a, I mean, she had a hard line drawn in saying like, no rapper. I'm like, oh, that sounds, that sounds prejudice. But a comic, yes. <laughs> comic came in, comic, bro. <laughs> Talib, <laughs> no, no, he's a rapper. He's a rapper. Meanwhile, you got a million pictures hugged up with Harvey Weinstein, MC Hammer. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> You you gonna find a hundred pictures of Oprah hugged up cheesing with Harvey Weinstein, but Ti no, right? I would no Harvey Harvey Weinstein's a good guy, but I would never be associated with two chains. But okay, so on the but like okay, I I don't know if she ever had OJ on the show, but there's an interesting thing because OJ had an interesting relationship with black women also because I don't believe how he went after Deb because Waka Flock is like 6'3". And to attack Deb like that when she found Gucci and, and Luda, OJ, I'm talking about OJ the Juice Man, not the Juice. I'm talking about oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man, you made a, uh, what is it called? It made, you made a turn into traffic. Yeah, <laughs> in segue. Okay. OJ the Juice and then OJ the Juice man. Yeah. How, how did y'all see this situation? Yo, I know a little bit about it, but not enough to explain it. Explain it. Uh, OJ the Juice man is a, a rapper from Atlanta that can't do Oprah show. And um, he had some songs like back in the day. He's the, hey, like that's all OJ the Juice Man. Um, and he went on a radio show saying that Deb Walker Flocker's mama, who was a uh, one of the pioneers of like down south hip hop management, um, kind of snaked him out of some bread, but. Deb is Waka Flocka's mama. <laughs> so when, uh, as, as much as she is a, now let's be very clear. Deb is a very powerful entity for hip hop. She she found and helped 
Nurture Nikki and Gucci and the Migos. Like she's been very influential in the space, but she also just happens to be Waka Flocka Mama. So it's like <laughs> she, she was she was doing all that before before Waka existed, before we even knew about Waka Flocka. And then so when he says this, you still talking about my mama, bro. And it, the, one of the most interesting things is, I, like, I'm a, I'm a stickler for this because I try to make all decisions based in, like, fly shit. And when people are doing lame shit, if you give it too much energy, you by default will end up lame. So when OJ says what he says, like, I, I don't – Waka's on the thing, like, man, I'm going to be lame as hell, bro. He says it. He's like – I got to respond to this nigga on the internet because he's on the internet talking shit in and I can't get in touch with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's the way nowadays. And, yeah, and he's just like, yo, bro, you got to stop talking about my mama, but it, it turns into some shit. And I don't know, I don't know Juice Man's story. I don't know, I don't know about his, pet. I don't know. I, don't, I, I honestly don't know his pedigree. I know the consistent story about Waka is Waka is, he he a street nigga, but he's also pro like physical shit. Like he's quick to fight yeah. at all times. Which makes sense because the nigga's like 6'4. He also is a big ass nigga. And I don't it, it's a really interesting space. How do you I don't know, bro. I don't know. What do you how do you how does Deb if you did if, if this is your mama, how do you protect her in this situation? It's it's a, it's it's because it's interesting because you my mama, but you also in the industry. Exactly. So you got to deal with what comes with the industry. But another part is they all got a relationship, so it's not like Waka. They don't, don't or they do. They do. Got gotcha. you. At some point in time, Waka know OJ. Right. This, this ain't this ain't this ain't me talking about Deb and Waka ain't don't know me at all. And it's like, where is this coming from? It's like you know where it's coming from. This it's not new information. Yeah. You know, um, I told you, you gotta watch the um hip hop uncovered. All right. You seen it, Mike? No, would that clear this up? No, not at all. But um, it's just you insight on Deb, though, for sure. Yeah, a lot of insight on Deb. Her brother Bimmy, who was a uh, original member of Supreme Team, mm. um, Trick Trick, Haitian Jack, and um, Big U. Mm. You know, Big U was like rolling sixties crib, but like um, really, really high up. Um, Trick Trick is the nigga who runs Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the No Fly Zone stuff. I, I definitely know. Yes, Trick Trick is, yeah. You remember Rick. that, Mike? Nope. The No Fly Zone stuff? So, you remember when Rick Ross had a show in Detroit and they wouldn't get off the bus? Yes. You remember that story? Yeah. That was Trick Trick saying, this nigga not performing here. And he said his problem wasn't with Rick Ross, his problem was with the label. Basically, and this is what you're supposed to do. He was like, yo, y'all not going to be booking shows out here and not putting Detroit artists on. Period. Right. So if y'all want Rick Ross to do whatever, then he open it and he open it. Right. From Detroit. Y'all not just gonna come out here, get money, and leave. Not and at this point in time, Detroit was like in a really bad spot. Yeah. It's on this, it's on the rise now, but it was bad. So you're like, that's not gonna happen. That's we're not doing that. So that's what the no fly zone stuff was about. Mm. So another thing happened with um young berg. Mm. Um Young Bird came through when somebody may or may not have took his chain, and then they was on the internet taking pictures with it on. But yeah, you know Haitian Jack. You familiar with the name at least? Oh, I do. 
Okay. Yeah. You're familiar with Hayes and Jack, right, BT? The- sure. So, yeah. It's, it's all of them just saying a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's highly entertaining. Is Now, is this on regular TV or is this like virtual reality? <laughs> Smoother. <laughs> <laughs> Lance, you gotta tell Mikey what it was like because he he don't know. Hey man, check this out, cuz. So I, I, I'm first off, I'm I'm sleepy. When I'm when I'm doing it, I'm sleepy. I'm a little, I ain't get a lot of sleep the night before. And he's like, you gotta try this. So I'm like, all right. So I'm already sleepy. Factor this in. The second I put this thing on, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it didn't even take long for me to be like, yo, this is this is the devil. <laughs> so I, I got the I got the joint on, right? And then it's like, see, the interesting thing about it is the tutorial walks you through it so well that you pick it up super quick. You don't have to be like even tech savvy. And I'm pretty tech savvy, but like I had my niece doing, she picked it right up and she was doing all kinds of stuff last night. Oh, cause that's, that's how the story ends. I went and bought one as soon as I landed. <laughs> but so you put the joint on, you got the controllers in, they, you set the boundary like your little force field to where this is. So if you like, if you touch too far out, you can see that you leave in the world, right? It's like a green screen, right? Like if I, off of, my light is my lighting is too good. It don't even look like this a green screen. But yeah, I literally uh, thought you was in front of a black wall. <laughs> I start doing this and realize what nothing gonna change because the light. Wait, what about now? Oh there yeah, there, there you go. So, but anyway, so you're doing it, right? You win the, you win the, the thing, right? And then the tutorial has you do things that are just kind of normal, right? So you want the tutorial, it's like, no, pick up this block and put it back down. Pick up this block and put it back down. And it's like, it's really your hands though. You can see your hands like, pick up this paper airplane and throw it. You're doing all this shit with the, it's like, it's fucking creepy dog. Mm. And it's like, it's like a ping pong ball and a paddle and you pick up and now you're just kind of playing ping pong but you're doing it with your hands. All in this world. Right? Then it was, then it was um oh, then it was like a like a video game system there. It looked like a Nintendo 64 or a Super Nintendo. It was like you can yeah. with different cartridges. It's like you could put in, pick up a cartridge, put it in, and now you're playing a game within, within the game. Within a game? Oh god. So now you're playing a game and it's like there's guns and all of that. And okay, now nah, pick up the guns. And now you got two guns and you're doing this. Now, imagine you doing this, right? You're in this world, but BT is in real life just looking at you laughing. <laughs> laughing or rapping? Because, <laughs> 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 yo, because. To the outside world, nigga, I'm just sitting here like this. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. And then the sound is so crazy because the sound feels like it's coming from your eyes. Mm. The way the glasses, because I can hear him talking to me. I can clearly hear BT talking to me or laughing or rapping. <laughs> and I can clearly hear this. Mm. 
You feel what I'm saying? It doesn't sound like they're over talking each other. It sounds like no. BT is talking to my ears and this is talking to my eyes. Damn. Right? Then you play all these games and all that. Okay, now when you're ready, take out that cartridge and put in another one. Don't mind if I do, lady. And you do that, and then it's another game you play. And then, I don't even know how I got here. Some little virtual bitch was like, let's dance. <laughs> oh, no shit. So she walked up to me, and we really dancing. Like that? She, like, start trying to, like, back it up a little bit. Like, all right, oh, bring that little virtual booty over here. Ah. We doing all of that, right? And then BT is like, nah, you got to do the boxing. And I was like, bet, nigga, let's box. So I stopped dancing with the virtual bitch. <laughs> Where did she go? She just kind of spent the way. <laughs> did she watch you box? Was, did she go get dressed and stuff? Like, what did she do? I thought she was going to be the rain girl. The, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. But after I'm dancing with this, view, this beautiful virtual woman, now she's gone. Okay, that's fine. Now I, now I, and I, I got to go to the boxing, right? <laughs> so now I get to the boxing. I got to step on the scale first. Oh, shit. So I'm looking for the scale. And then BT's like, no, look to your right. It was a scale to my right. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> it's over <Right>. there. <laughs> I had to. I had to physically pick my feet up and hop onto the scale. <laughs> how much you weigh? How much you weigh? <laughs> how much you weigh, nigga? <laughs> Yo, go ahead. Yo, I think I came in at like 170 or something. I don't, I don't know if this, I don't know if the weight came up. It was, it was, it wasn't for weight. It was just okay, okay, keep going. <laughs> so I get on the scale, and then I'm like, and now I'm ready to fight, but I, they, I, I can't fight. And BT saying, because you got to put your mouthpiece in. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> so I, look, hey Mike, this is how, this is how, so I'm like this. If you did, he's like, no. If you look around, there'll be a, there's a mouthpiece there waiting for you. <laughs> you thought you was gonna put a fake ass piece in? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm like, we ready? But like, I look a little north of where the scale was, there's a mouthpiece waiting for me, new, in the package. Wow, wow. <laughs> Take the mouthpiece in, put the mouthpiece in. Once the mouthpiece is in, now my opponent is just there in the other corner waiting for me. Yeah. He was a white dude in green shorts. He had a headgear on, we was, we was just gonna spar, right? <clears throat> so now it's bing and we sparring. Now I really gotta throw punches, Mike. Yeah. I can't just press, but I, I gotta throw punches. He right here in my face. I can see him. Right? When I go low, I'm watching them block. I gotta really, I got I really <clears throat> I really gotta do this, right? His punches is coming to me. They're hitting me right here. I could see him, but I'm blocking him. At least I thought I was. Mm. <laughs> I'm getting right. Boom. Boom. We only spar for one round. Oh, no, two rounds. At the end, we both in the middle of the ring with the ref there. The decision coming in, and you're a winner by unanimous decision. When I heard that, I started getting my thing ready to raise my arm in victory. And they said, the other person. And I was like, what? <laughs> you got your ass whipped? <laughs> Mike, let me tell you. He didn't hurt me. He done no damage. I was moving. I was faster. I was landing more power shots. Um, you know, it was clearly a, a, 
a virtual bet going on. The virtual mob was involved because clearly I was prettier when I left than I was coming in. That's how much he didn't hit me. <laughs> and as Mike, you be really tired because you ain't never boxed for a real professional two or three rounds, nigga. So you be legit like, wait a minute, nigga. Yeah. I give us. <laughs> <laughs> make this round longer. Make the, make the in between the thing longer. <laughs> nigga, you can. Oh, what I didn't tell Lance is if you want to give up, there's a towel. Nigga, you got to throw a towel. <laughs> <laughs> you got to oh, look yeah. up over the, the mouthpiece. It's you got to throw it a little to the left. You got to grab the towel and throw that bitch to like quick. You got to <laughs> you gotta swing the towel like G-Thang and be like, nigga, I'm out of here. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.